All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Tonight, we have the privilege of bringing on one of our good friends and leaders, really, uh, in our lives, Roger Richards, who's the director of the Deep Rig. Uh, welcome, Roger. Thanks, guys, for having me. It's good to be on. Absolutely. So, uh, Penny's here with me. And hey, everybody. Be... Hey. Great, uh, great to have you on, Roger. Much appreciated. Um, I was asking, uh, I was just asking Roger before um, before the call how his stress level was because I know this documentary has been, it's going to be a blockbuster and um just wanted to see how, how the whole thing kind of played out, but um, he's doing all right. Um, he's it. It's been a grinder, but um, uh, just what we were going to ask you first off, Roger, was just for anybody that's like not familiar with what the deep read kind of is about maybe you could just give us a rough idea of you know a quick outline for people that might not you know know about it sure sure the, the deep rig is based off of a book called the deep rig written by patrick byrne and if anybody hasn't got a chance to read this book um if you're interested at all in really understanding the nuances around uh, what went down you know after november 3rd and and everything actually that kind of led up to that patrick's book is a fascinating kind of insight into all of that uh, experience and the book goes into much more depth um, around just kind of the, the the circumstances that happened over that time, you know, and, and obviously couldn't be covered in this entire film. So if anybody's interested in, in kind of really understanding the roots of the story and where it came out of, I would suggest that book. Patrick's got another really great blog called Deep Capture, which is actually the origins of um, the Deep Rig. And the book itself started at some posts where Patrick, you know, started getting involved in monitoring this stuff and, um, you know, and then it blossomed into this book and then kind of, you know, uh, ended up into this this film here. But if anybody's interested in kind of understanding kind of the origin story behind this, uh, definitely check out Patrick's book, The Deep Rig and uh, DeepCapture.com. Excellent. And uh, and how exactly did, did you end up, did you approach um, Patrick about it yourself, Roger, or did he approach you or... How did you get it was, up coming to it? It was kind of a combination effort of Steve uh, Luchescu, who's uh, my partner and, and producer and co-director on this film. We, you know, we worked with Joe Flynn previous on a thousand pieces, and he was kind enough to kind of uh, share his testimony in regards to what happened to his brother Michael, um, and you know, focused uh, a big part of the message in a thousand pieces was anchored with you know Joe's testimony, and so that led into conversations that you know when when people were looking at you know what happened into you know after november and really trying to figure out how we could kind of get the information out we uh just threw our hat in the ring you know we're crazy enough we're uh, the, the the group that that is we and all of us here you know we've gone through about every amount of censorship that could you know happen to any film or filmmaker you know group we we understand all the different kind of subcultures and countercultures that follow the politics but not just the politics, the larger kind of movement that's built around a lot of this stuff. And, and that means both from the left and from the right and everybody kind of in between. And so, you know, we ended up getting into early conversations about, um, you know, being of service. And if that service is needed, um, you know, we'd step into the ring. And uh, that's essentially kind of what, what, what brought all this together. There was just a need to get this information out and, you uh, you know, despite going up against, you know, this is probably the most nuclear film that's going to be put out this year in 2021 in regards of, you know, censorship, suppression, otherwise, uh, we took that on as a space of, of service to the people that had worked really, really hard already to document this information. Uh, what, what Patrick calls the bad news bears, a collective of people that really came together prior to, um, you know, the Deep Rig book being canonized and everything that happened, you know, those people put in a lot of serious work and dedication, hours to, you know, uncovering what, what really went wrong because everybody knew, you know, something had gone wrong. I mean, instinctually, even people on the left, you know, that were, were happy to see, uh, you know, the outcome of the election. I think that there's just an overall feeling of uh, some stank in the air, you know, right? And so uh, that that whole group that was able to kind of go in and dig in at the, the, the hardest time, taking the most flack, getting shut down all over the place, getting canceled, uh, you know, censored, etc. 
that's that's the story of the deep right here. These are the people that actually put in the work and the time to fight for everybody else. Amazing. So kind of like a why not you, why not us mentality. Um, yes, exactly. So with with regards to the you know the, the the book obviously being a little bit more focused on uh, the the numbers, the uh, the you know the data, uh, a lot of really raw information with with the audit now that we have obviously coming wrapping up coming to a close is that more heavily involved in the documentary and is that a focal point or is it more so just the whole election story told through well, I, film? I, I can't i can't really talk about the specifics about what's going to be in this film especially in regards to maricopa and what's going on there but i will say that um this film is an aggregate of all of the information that, you know, was presented essentially in the deep rig uh, in, in regards to what happened in, you know, the, the election, after the election, and, you know, leading up to it. But then there's also, you know, a big part of making the film here for me as a filmmaker is what are the people's personal stories behind this and how did that all play out? And the deep break goes into that and understanding, you know, a really, really human story of people that showed up, um, you know, without a central point of leadership, without, uh, you know, somebody kind of, you know, taking the, the staff and saying, follow me. It was a, a group of people that just showed up in service to all of this. And I found that an incredible story. And so within the storyline of what the deep break is, that's nestled in there. These, these people you'll get to know, you'll get to understand outside of the, the mainstream media smearing that's been done to a lot of them, outside of the canceling that's done to a lot of them. You'll get to see uh, sides to them in regards to why they showed up to do this and the personal story that bonded them together and all of us together, you know, essentially through, you know, producing this film in, in, in whole. But that's a, that's kind of the, the mixed nutshell of what the Deep Break film is. It, it, it's really based on a lot of the facts uh, that's presented in the book, but then it's also really kind of documenting the experiences of the people that went through the facts that were recorded in that book. Right, and and to to touch on on what you were saying there, Roger, um, like what what was it like to work with like big characters like General Flynn, Patrick Byrne, Sidney Powell? I'm sure you got a lot of you know, you know, big big names there, big personalities. You know, how how did that whole process go? Yeah, I think um, you know. People, some people are larger than life, you know. Some people have, um, they're such uh, incredibly powerful archetypes alone through the experiences that they've gone through, you know, publicly, how people have got to know them, you know, through the mainstream media's perspective, through social media's perspective, through different subculture and counterculture, you know, clicks, etc. And so it's like when you meet people like this and you're, you're able to interview them and talk to them about, um, you know, one of the personal sides of things that, that don't get necessarily put out there. You get to see that these people, although they're larger than life, they're, you know, they walk even with all of us in that same place. These people have the same burdens we all do. And those people are reflections of the same people that are, you know, listening to this call or anybody else out there that's wanting to do the work and be of service to, to the world right now. But being with people like that, that are so highly crystallized into their dedication of service is you know, nothing less than inspiring. You know, Patrick, I think, is a, a, a really interesting character in regards to, you know, his perspective around this, the fact that he's a libertarian, he didn't vote for Trump. Um, you know, he's never voted for right or left in, in that perspective. He's very, very dedicated to the libertarian, you know, philosophy and, you know, and, and also philosophy in general. I found Patrick to be, you know, a very, very deep thinker that looks at the Constitution and the values of the Constitution as almost a spiritual philosophy in, in his life in regards to, um, you know, what we're up against and the precedence of, you know, what's being set here right now. And so it was amazing to kind of get to know and, and to, to see those people, you know, in their elements. I think that General Flynn uh, is, you know, just the salt of the earth, just approachable, wonderful, kind, 
very dedicated, very intelligent person that, um, you know, is also in that place of complete surrender to service, you know, to, to understanding how, you know, he can be at best of service to America, but that goes beyond America, that goes out into the rest of the world. And I think that's one thing that stood out to me uh, a lot in these interviews is, uh, even though this is about an American election that happens here in America, the the energy behind most people and a lot of the conversations in this film was their concerns, you know, that if this happens here, there's no hope for the rest of the world because we're the ones that are supposed to be, you know, essentially holding that line as a level for, you know, others to be able to att eventually attain or, or get to in a place of being able to have a democratic voice, essentially. And so I think that overall, you know, getting to meet these people and see them and interact with them, you know, over time, uh, it's wonderful memories, of amazing people, um, but they're just like us in the same way, and they're all, you know, dedicated to doing the work that, uh, you know, we're all trying to do in service. Uh, they're all equally, as, you know, um, fallible as far as being human in their own, you know, ways, and that's, you know, that's what makes everything, you know, real and beautiful in regards to this movement and people trying to raise awareness about, you know, what is happening right now and how you know, what the implications of that is on not just us here in America, but outside of America. Wow. So it's a major focus on the selflessness and obviously how this is bigger than any one country or even just this election. Right. And being on the front lines, of course. And I mean, when you see what General Flynn has been put through, put through the ring or put through court and the fact that he never gives up, he never stops fighting, right? And he's such a humble character. It's, you know, I, I can only imagine what it's like to work with him. It must be so inspiring, right? Yeah. And, you know, with in his family's case, the amount of, uh, you know, hardship that they've put together as a family, you know, what I've heard from, you know, the interviews and uh, whatnot is, you know, that, that really drove that family together even more so. What could have broken up, you know, many families and, and really kind of pulled them apart with, you know, all of the kind of tumultuous attacks from the mainstream media and what they had to go through in regards to the justice system here. It could have pulled a lot of families apart, but that family, from at least my perspective of the interviews and what I witnessed, uh, has catalyzed themselves into, you know, a fortress as far as their commitment to, you know, serving the United States and serving freedom and making sure that, um, you know, that the, those things are respected, honored, and valued, you know, moving forward. And, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're an incredible family, in my opinion. I couldn't agree more. Um, so what one one question, I think a lot of people, this this one was heavily asked and definitely people were wanting to hear your, your perspective and your take on it. Um, obviously with what's going on and what the country is going through, or so to speak, what, what uh, we believe the country is going through, uh, there's been, a, there's a lot of negativity that can be stigmatized and, and attached to the election. So a lot of, a lot of folks are wondering, like, how do they bring attention to this cause and what's going on uh, without essentially uh, taking a negative connotation, um, kind of a forward thinking, uh, new way, uh, you know, building, building a new uh, vision for the future, you know, that isn't heavily focused on the negative, uh, but at the same time, the truth needs to come out. Um, so, so what would be your take on like advice or what, what you would, uh, how you would advi advise anyone to go about that? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. For anybody that has gone through hardship over the last years, you know, communicating with family, trying to educate friends, neighbors, you know, being in a work situation where you're public about your political beliefs or, you know, uh, opinions about, you know, the current climate of the world in whole, it has been such a you know, an uphill battle in regards to, you know, the, the, the division that's been kind of broadcast out there in the bait. We've all fallen for it. You know, we've all fallen for the bait and, and, and dividing against each other and battling against each other. And I think, you know, one of the things I know, you know, very well just through the experience of this film is, you know, you, if you're talking about election integrity right now, uh, you are absolutely shunned. I can't tell you 
how many venues we had to kind of go through to finally find uh, venues that were sympathetic to, you know, screening the film. Uh, it's the same with advertising. It's the same with, you know, anybody that makes a film, you go through the normal process of, you know, advertising, publishing, you know, distribution, film releases. But with this project in whole, it has been a uphill battle from the very beginning with everything involved, whether it's, you know, booking a location and they want to know what it's for and then it's oh this film no we want nothing to do with that the amount of um you know absolute rejection that is out there right now with the consciousness about not wanting to look at or understand this in my opinion is is, is very very dangerous and the apathy that allows people you know especially on the left in my opinion that go well, yeah i know it was rick but at least you know trump was out or, or whatever that type of apathy is is really um you know, dangerous also from the standpoint of what we could lose. And I think that's, that was also a big part of the conversation that arose in this film here. And so when, I, when people ask me, you know, when this evidence, you know, comes out, when this film comes out, you know, uh, and what are people going to do? Are they going to, you know, explode into rage and anger and, you know, wherever it ends up going from there. And my, my thoughts on this are, and and I'm going to continually dwell on this, and that is that everybody that sees this film or that understands kind of what has happened has educated yourself, done your own research, and knows very well what, what happens there, this is a time of extreme gratitude. This is a time for the craziest, uh, deepest, most brilliant gratitude that you can uh, tap into into your heart. And the gratitude that you've got to hold through this moment and everything that comes after and what's going to be brought up in this experience is strictly about the people that have done this and that colluded together. The gift they gave us is they showed us their network. They showed us that the mainstream media, the tech corporations, the intelligence agencies, operatives within the political systems and the corruptions there are all tied together at the hip. And they've revealed themselves absolutely stunningly in this experience. And the gratitude that we should have in the public to now see them as they are and as, as who they are, that gratitude will protect everyone through this experience of you know, pulling this out. This is like the abscess tooth that, you know, you keep probing and you can't, uh, you know, you can't stop probing even though it hurts. This thing is going to be yanked out and pulled out to the public very soon. And um, people that feel discouraged, people that feel angry, people that, uh, you know, feel unheard or, or devalued, I encourage all of you guys to, 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 to delve into the wealth of gratitude that these people you know, of a negative perspective and um, intentions have revealed themselves. And that is that is part of this great awakening, is to see that. And so this is a time of celebration. It's not a time of horror. This is a time of rejoicing for the fact that we get to expose this stuff, systemically undo it and rebuild it in a way that is built for the people, we the people, right. not the corporations, exactly. not the elites not the corrupt, uh, you know, government officials, and that means on a global scale. So that's kind of my perspective and diatribe on it. <laughs> you know, that was, that was beautiful, you know? man. I mean, that was, that was literally on point and it go, flowing perfectly, uh, making a lot of sense and, and just focusing, obviously, on the positive. And uh, I think that's really, uh, you know, something with regard to corporatism uh, and, and obviously what we're up against, so to speak, uh, you know, with with you mentioning the just the, the stigma and how much you've been attacked, even just trying to get a venue. Uh, so do you think that the corporate structure in in our country uh, or at least the way that it's been uh, been dealt with, right, with regards to Enron, with regards to uh, the real estate crash? You know, it's like money, money speaks and people, you know, people follow essentially, which is completely backwards. Uh, so the question is really, do you think the corporate structure needs a remedy uh, or needs to be remedied? I think the corporate structure is one of many things that are seeking a remedy, you know, obviously from that, that standpoint of things. And, you know, a big part of what we're trying to kind of 
canonized around this film and the marketing of this film is like we're handicapped out of the gate this film is you know censored uh you know right out the door as far as just the content that that's uh you know that it discusses and so what we have to rely on is the grassroots movements the people and the willingness of, of you know uh, individuals all over the united states but also the world to want to share and get this message out and so the idea you know like a normal you know film would go through a, a theater release where you get to contact you know your local theater chain submit that but because this is so nuclear uh we actually need people to rent theaters in their own towns rent churches in their own towns rent barns in their own towns whatever they would like to do to create their own screenings of this film and help us you know make the corporate structure that's out there in regards to sharing media and information, um, you know, uh, obsolete in regards to the fact that there are such strong grassroots networks that are willing now to move on these things and mobilize these things to create the push through that's going to, that's been happening and that needs to happen to not only, you know, get past the censorship and how they're trying to suppress us, but to show everyone how to do that together. To, they, they need to see how to do this now, you know, there has been this incredible division on the right and left for many, many, you know, uh, 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 months over this whole experience. But, you know, for the last four years, there's been nonstop bombardments around, you know, creating separation, whether it's, you know, we're separated by race or gender or sexual preference or politics or borders or all of those things. The idea of trying to separate us has been injected over and over and over and over into everything that we do. And a remedy for that is to get together collectively together. And whether you're a right, far right, whether you're far left, whether you're in between, libertarian, it doesn't matter. Election integrity, and that's the story of this film, election integrity is, you know, so important to everyone and it should be the place that we can get together on and looking at you know this film it's not just about what happened in 2020 it's also about what happened in 2016 with bernie and that and how the left was disenfranchised from that vote and uh you know again going back to the idea that this is a topic that should unite all of us and not only that we should all be able to see right now where we're all being played, how we've all been being played, you know, by the corporations, the mainstream media, the tech giants, et cetera, et cetera. And the opportunity to come out and start changing those things on a grassroots level is, is really what's needed. And so we're trying to do that with this film, you know, starting on the, the 26th, leading up to August 1st. If you would like to do a screening of this film and have a private license for it, uh, uh, and turn it into a business model, maybe, maybe You've got a nonprofit, your own organization uh, to do that. Rent a theater, rent a Masonic hall, rent a church, rent a, you know a barn, whatever in your own hometown, and hold your own showings. And use this as an opportunity to bring people together to have conversations around uniting to rebuild the system that has failed all of us. Absolutely, and and to touch on that point, Roger. <clears throat> let's say regarding and we know the toxic nature of of this film and the nuclear nature of it right and the what you're really up against to try and get it out there like do you do you think that it's going to be a slow burner because of the censorship and it's you know it's going to have to slowly get get out there because of the tech giants and or, or do you think that like people are awake enough now that they are going to be able to push it out and all those things you talked about where, you know, people are going to show it in their churches and this and that. Do you think people are going to, you know, do that right away? Or like I said, is it going to be a slow burner? Or do you think it's actually going to reach the left um, eventually, like, and change the minds over there? Or do you think that's going to be a long process? Or how do you feel about that? I think that the climate right now, uh, there's probably a bit of a buyer's remorse going on in regards to the election in general for a lot of things. There's a lot of, you know, question marks for people that, uh, you know, regardless of political spectrum, are wondering what kind of dystopian nightmare did we just find ourselves upon? And so if you're experiencing that and you're going through that, that that's what this moment is really about and how you can utilize that to kind of transmute the experience that you've all gone through over the last you know, four years, especially here, into a place of, you know, tossing the system out, reinvigorating 
the political system in the United States with all spectrums of thought, color, race, age, gender, for wherever you can, and get these dinosaurs out. These people that have been long-term politicians that have turned this into careers that do not have your best, uh, you know, opinions on both the right or left in, in that spectrum. That's what needs to happen. There needs to be uh, a reinvigoration from that. And so as far as like the slow burn, it's really up to the public. Like right now, we're, we're as, as far as the film goes, we're depending strictly on digital soldiers because, you know, every other avenue is, is, is potentially banned for us right now in regards to that. So if you want to help, if you want to push this message of this film, if you want to, you know, help use this film as a conversation starter between somebody that maybe has had different, you know, uh, politics with you in the past this is this, this film is for that this film is a bridge between all you know perspectives from the standpoint of really remaking a broken system here and looking at it just outside not just in from the perspective of you know what is a paper ballot being tallied or you know what are the actual systems but what is the culture surrounded around voting and politics here in the united states that great awakening and that reinvigoration again of the spirit of people wanting to be of service to each other that's what is going to root out the virus that has infested you know american politics and by proxy global politics on that whole scale and so if you know if the question is, are we going to see kind of a slow burn? It's really up to you guys. Yeah, anybody who's hearing this, anybody that understands, you know, the level of censorship, it's about your commitment out there. What are you willing to do? Are you willing to, you know, uh, share a live stream with the family one night and, you know, talk about it when we premiere it? Are, are you willing to buy a copy and share it with, uh, you know, somebody that, that has different opinions? Are you willing to host your own screening in your own town? It's like, you know, we'll all go out and we'll pay $25 for Hollywood's freaking, you know, top movie, uh, you know, with the top Hollywood stars. But what does it mean to support, you know, a grassroots documentary that's getting, you know, crushed by censorship in regards to a message that's you know for everyone on that spectrum that's it, it's really in your guys' hands the digital soldiers it's in your hands it's, yes. it's up to you guys to bring this out there and you will make this message of it what it is based off of your efforts we've all done the work uh you know the bad news bears patrick everybody has done the work on the information put it out there you know the filmmakers myself and, and our group has done the work in canonizing that into a piece of art but it's really up to you guys to share that you know use that as a catalyst for conversation for you know opening consciousness and and all of those things it, it, it will depend on you I think that's absolutely amazing and really fantastic, almost like a social experiment in a way. And it's going to require a lot of individual courage, right, to be able to stand up. And even if you have been the outcast or the crazy guy in your family, you now there is solid, tangible evidence that this documentary is going to produce and show. And and, and really, the it, it's embodying that you can't you can't tell them, show them mentality because you're you're literally stating that hey, like we're up against this behemoth of a just absolute you know, uh, terrible system. And, and it, it's, in, you know, it's encapsulated and funded. Uh, it's been going on for as long as it has, obviously. Uh, and and you, you're saying, you know, this is the opportunity for everyone to come together and literally just show one, two, three people, you know. Right, or, and not or, so long ago, the left were for democracy, right? I mean, but that has gone so radically. Left, blurred, you know, yeah, they're both like in the same uh, spectrum as, as, uh, as before. So, so almost... You know, coming, showing people coming together, obviously, do you see this as, as building to future uh, possibilities for people to meet up and, and have those conversations, bridge that gap? I, I absolutely think so. I think this is how movements are built. This is a movement. This movement has been stirring all across, you know, many spectrums of different countercultures and all of it. This movement is, you know, coming alive it's coming into its own maturity it's coming into uh the embodiment of you know the organism that is all of us you know collectively absolutely disenfranchised by the system that we get consent to each, each day and so the idea of you know i've always been the proponent for for art being the greatest weapon you have in a war of consciousness that's where i kind of stuck my stake in regards to my skill set and and put it in regards to service here but to create 
to use this opportunity to create, whether that's an event in your own hometown, whether you want to do a talk about this, whether you want to you know, create a YouTube series that follows up your own research on this stuff, whatever, you know, that aspect of creation is in you, you know, that's where it gets utilized at the highest level for all of us is when you contribute from your most authentic place. Maybe you're a cook and you want to have a dinner and serve people dinner and watch this movie. You know, get creative with the skill sets that you have. Find a joy in expressing that creativity and those powers, those tools, those things that come together on a community level are bigger than any guns, they're bigger than any laws, they're bigger than any you know, shields, batons, any place that could come up against, you know, stopping a movement like that. Creativity is nature, and nature you cannot contain. So so really just shattering that, that uh, subconscious that's blocking the idea that we, we can't do this, or uh, yes. this isn't possible. It's like, Put that to side, yeah. clear your mind, just listen to what resonates and go with what you feel, you know, your gut is telling you. Uh, I, I think that's absolutely amazing and beautiful. Um, you know, and I, I, at first I honestly thought like, man, how, like, what's the marketing going to be like? There's how, how can you market something that's so jaded and, and slighted? Uh, but now that I'm, you know, now I'm seeing it uh, from what you're saying and from what I've you know, learned over the last year. Uh, you know, and knowing you and obviously myself, just how much we've both changed, uh, you know, just going back a year, to, you know, a year and two months ago from now. Um, and it's really been beautiful. But that was really my next question was um, how much has the last year plus uh, changed you as an individual and as a filmmaker? I think that, you know, everybody in the last year, you know, in regards to what, you know, the the paradox of 2020 was for all of us. I think everybody got the opportunity to unplug from the routine, whether they liked it or not, you know? And I think that there were incredible things that that came out of this last year, you know, that will echo into the rest of, you know, our experiences together. Um, you know, the idea is that people are realizing they can work from home. That's, that's something on a labor level. Um, and also a self-empowerment level that I think is going to open up the whole world in the way that we work and, um, you know, have work routines and, and, and create together. Um, there are many things that, you know, for me this last year as, as a filmmaker, what has changed for me is, is, is realizing, you know, how to also work on a digital level where, you know, a lot of the interviews I was uh, able to conduct, you know, where I wasn't able to conduct, uh, you know, for certain, uh, you know, COVID reasons or whatever, um, I was able to do through Zoom. I was able to collaborate with people online as far as post-production. Um, you know, the, the world that's shifting right now in regards to the effect of what COVID did, but more so the shutdowns and showing people the ability that the system that we're kind of locked into every day, there's a lot of stuff that's obsolete. There's a lot of things that technology can provide now um, that, that can offer a better quality of life for not only, you know, ourselves, but for the planet. The amount of, you know, less driving people have to do to be able to work from home, for example, is, you know, an immediate effect on the, the, the planet in whole and on resources. And so I think that, you know, for me, what's, what's changed as a filmmaker is to really understand that there, there's no boundaries anymore. You know, there people uh, with with just a little bit of money can do the same quality films as Hollywood has been doing out there. They can do the same quality projects. The idea that um, Hollywood, you know, owns the, the, the power center of essentially propaganda, you know, for the corporations and, you know, everybody else that goes into that pot, you know, that's, that's being turned over to the people and the public. And the effect that that has on you where you stop working for people, you stop working for corporations, and you're more of an independent contractor as a service to offer, what does that really do? Uh, when you're talking about the corporations becoming obsolete and the idea of kind of looking at community resources, you know, an interesting thing is just to even look at the idea of Airbnb or, you know, Uber, the idea of sharing resources that, you know, 10, 15 years ago would be unheard of. You'd never take a ride in a stranger's car. You'd never sleep in a stranger's house. But what does it mean to own all 
of these resources collectively and how do we use them, you know, how do we uh, share them through all of the technologies that we have available. All of this stuff is part of the COVID age and as much as COVID and um, the shutdowns and everything that have happened over the last year, uh, you know, kind of drove people into a lot of hardship, a lot of death, a lot of suffering. The flip side of that coin is there's no kind of taking that back. There's no, there's no way to say, well, we need you to come into the office because now that's just how it was. It's like there's no reason for that. People have the opportunities now to get out of those systems and start waning themselves off the corporate system. And it won't take much waning before this corporate, uh, you know, Succubuses don't have anything to feed off of and will end up collapsing. And what is left is an infrastructure of people, services being provided through a network of you know communication and, and grassroots. That's what I picture. That's what I hope for. Uh, that's what I've seen from what's happened over the last year, and that's kind of how it's affected my work as a filmmaker. That's amazing, and I, I think it's really a great highlight. You know, that mentioning the, the corporate structure and you know the fourteen thousand two hundred. Uh, or so CEOs since September 1st of 2017 since of, that have resigned, right? Whether that's government, uh, you know, CEO, corporation, or otherwise, uh, most of them are in these industries like health, uh, you know, uh, government, obviously, state legislature, um, and, and just knowing that all those people, we don't really know who, you know, who they were specifically replaced by. And so it's almost as if all these corporate corporatists or, or corporate uh, shells are basically shelled out and now the future is going to be based on you know ideas and creativity will be the currency of the future so you know it's just getting out there and showing people that is, is what i'm taking from what you've just said yeah most definitely i think the world is in for one of the greatest revolutions of consciousness it's ever seen and it was brought on you know partially by by covid here you know when you when you when you stress things out they evolve and whatever the agenda was, whatever played out, you know, there's lots of opinions, thoughts, and ideas and information out there for everybody to research around what happened last year. The bottom line is, though, we all grew in, in big ways. And, um, you know, that's, that's something to be recognized and seen in this experience. But also make sure that that growth isn't harnessed by, you know, the entity that's still trying to feed off of you. We need to make sure that growth is expanded into the consciousness and the ideas of reformulating the world that we give consent to every day. Absolutely. And so just making sure that obviously people come before money and, uh, you know, treat, treating obviously others as, as you'd want to be treated. So I think, uh, I think this is going to be an absolute tidal wave. Um, I don't think, I don't think they see what's, what's coming at all. Um, and I think it's going to just build up organically and really just blossom into something that is going to be very beautiful to uh, almost like redocument in a way. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, hopefully people will do that, like, like you were saying, and, and show the experience and just keep that going, even if the social channels we're using right now are uh, corrupt and the algorithms are pushed against us. If we're getting out and meeting people in our communities and, and getting active, that's that's, that's the difference. can stop, right? So Amazing. Well, uh, and so that's an opportunity. Yeah, that's an opportunity for everybody here that you know wants to support this film. Do, do an event in your own town. You know, rally your people together. Rally your local, you know, communities together to 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 share a piece of art to have a conversation about something. This film isn't about you know Donald Trump. You know, needs to be back in office. This film is not about you know all of the shady things that you know each side has done in whole. This film is showing out outdated system. It's showing all of the avenues that are vulnerable to us, uh, you know, being uh, manipulated by people that have interests and uh, availabilities and access to these systems. And the election integrity conversation is not a political conversation in that in that way election integrity is about a community understanding how we can all get things done now by by creating integrity if we had the ability of an upgraded system where it was just as easy to you know like a facebook post 
post as it is to, you know, uh, be able to vote and understand, you know, certain politics, you probably have a lot more people reinvigorated into, you know, participating in this thing. If you're an influencer out there, you know, one of the things that I tell people is influencers are ripe for going into politics right now. If you are, you know, on a local level, you know, want to go into politics on a, you know, county, state level, etc., influencers out there are, are, to me, one of the greatest avenues to start shaking up the political system and getting out the old dinosaurs. They have the ability to reach, they have the ability to actually get votes, and they have a, 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 a finger on the pulse of, a, 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 you know, a real contemporary group of people, you know, younger generations especially, that understand the capabilities of these technologies and, and how they can support a better experience for us whole. And so, you know, that's kind of my thoughts on it too. If, if, if you want to get involved politically, you know, especially in 2022, that's a big part of this message, you know, to get involved, especially being a, a local observer uh, at your, you know, poll places, um, being able to help secure and make sure that election integrity is, you know, sovereign for, you know, us all to participate into that system and that it isn't, you know, accessible to these people that, um, you know, don't have our best interests to have. That's amazing. Absolutely, Roger. And um, we won't keep you too long more. So, where where can people go to um, to uh, sign up and like what are the steps they need to take to go and you know start screening the movie? And I know there's going to be a live stream too. So if you can let anybody know, and just to let everybody know as well, we're going to be doing a post production on this um, interview with Roger that we'll be we'll be dropping in the chat. So other people that might have missed out on the live chat will be able to hear this too. So we'll be pushing that out. Um, but yeah, Roger, if you could just let people know where exactly they can go and what, what the plan is moving forward with the movie and what's the best place they can they can get it and how to order it. Yeah, absolutely. So if you're interested in following the movie and getting updates just about this movie, but the, the movement that follows the, you know, ancillary events that happen, you know, continual follow-up footage and, you know, the, the stuff that will be a part of it, you can go to uh, the deep rig dot movie. That's the main website. And if you sign up for notifications there with your email, you'll be in the funnel um, in regards to getting notified about the different events that will happen, about how to uh, you know schedule a theater release in your local community. Uh, we'll be premiering the film uh, for the first time on the 26th in Phoenix at the Dream City Church. Information is up there for tickets in person if you want to go in person. And then we're also live streaming that event. There are limited tickets to those events. So if you guys are interested in doing that, definitely you know jump into that energy now because I have a feeling there will be a lot of interest to kind of sell this this out here but then ultimately uh after that the the, the website is is the hub again at the deep rig dot movie for all updates that will be continually going through so if you're in that funnel and you've given us uh, your email address then you'll be getting updates based off of that that's amazing so that's been roger richards the director of the deep rig and i have a feeling roger that we're going to be in very close contact and communication and just continuing to revisit and kind of seeing where where things progress and where they go from here. But thank you for, for coming on. Thank you for answering our questions and uh, God bless everybody. And yeah, been an absolute pleasure, Roger, and all the success with the movie because the message is, is so important that, um, you know, we, we need everybody behind this and we need everybody to push this out, no matter what your political leanings are, color, creed, whatever, this, this information needs to get out. This is about our own lives, our livelihoods. The, the, the societies we live in, the rules that, go, that that govern us, and this needs to be, you know, a halt needs to be put to this, like, immediately, and this is the kind of information that people need to be made aware of, so much appreciated, Roger. Thanks for the time. Yeah, I'm happy to share the conversation with you guys always, and I'm just putting out there a great thanks to everybody that supported my work, supported the team of, you know, the collective that I'm a part of here. Uh, you know, everybody has put in countless hours and surrendered their entire kind of personal lives 
you know, to be of service to this. Um, I'll put out a special thank you to my bearded wonder, Adam, out there for all of the work that he's done in all of this. But, you know, ultimately just thank you to everyone that supported, you know, my work, our work, the work of the service to the world and, and, and changing this experience for everybody. That's all it's going to take. And um, the sooner that we do it, the sooner that we'll be living in it. Thank you, guys. God bless. Thanks, Roger. And shout out to yep. Adam, too. We know you're a war power out there and you never stop. So keep it up. Yeah. Keep up the great work. Um, well, that was that was pretty amazing. Yeah. Signing off. <laughs> that was great, dude.